Noriyuki Shikata, thank you very much for coming to the Crossman event series here at UNC uh, Chapel Hill. It was a pleasure to listen to your talk on Japan and China and their complex relationship. In summary, how would you summarize these, the state of this relationship? It's getting better, but it has been very difficult in the past. Or what is your summary? Right, right. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, eight years ago, uh, it was uh, in a pretty difficult situation. And uh, during the last eight years, we have been seeing uh, uh, gradually better uh, relations. So at this point of time, uh, we are on talking terms, and uh, uh, we are starting to discuss uh, some of the areas for cooperation, uh, or more of a straight you know, for the discussion of uh, uh, pending issues. So um, what would you say are the major problems, the major contentious issues between uh, Japan and China, both in the past and right now? Right. Uh, so from a Japanese perspective, uh, there, there are uh, pending issues surrounding the East China Sea. We don't see uh, any attempts to change the status quo, and hopefully uh, we wish to realize uh, progress uh, in our cooperation in East China Sea. Uh, on such issues as uh, joint development of resources. And uh, uh, the second point is uh, regarding uh, uh, issues like uh, Chinese uh, restrictions of import of uh, food items uh, from uh, as many as 10 prefectures. Uh, and uh, so those are the, uh, the very visible issues uh, which are concerns uh, of uh, the Japanese public. Mm -hmm. Japan has, of course, a close alliance with the United States, but it also, for trade reasons, export reasons, economic reasons, it wishes to be on a good, in a good relationship with China. So how do you balance that relationship between the two giants? So is any smaller country, such as Japan, being torn apart or has to carefully balance both relationships? It must be very difficult. Of course, uh, our... Uh Security policy is based on uh, U.S. Japan Security Alliance, and uh, this uh, alliance relations have uh, uh, lasted you know, during the uh, last uh, 60 years. And we are thinking that uh, this uh, uh, deepened uh, alliance between Japan and the United States will continue for years and decades you know, to come. At the same time, as we mentioned, you know, China uh, is. Uh, the largest you know, trading partner for, for Japan, and uh, there are many Japanese companies investing in, in, in China. So we hope uh, that uh, uh, with the, chi uh, the Chinese government uh, continuing uh, reform and opening up uh, these uh, trade uh, frictions between the United States and, Jap uh, and, and China uh, would uh, uh, be ameliorated, and, and uh, this is something you know we are also hoping in terms of uh, addressing uh, some, uh, many of the, the market access issues in China, and this is I think shared among uh, American companies, European com companies, and Japanese companies in China. Yes, indeed, and um, uh, some countries in the region are a little concerned about the militarization, as they call it, of Japanese foreign policy. That Japan seems to rearm, put more money into its defense industries and seems to throw its weight about in a more geopolitical sense more so than in the past. How do you see that? I guess you know, that kind of uh, perception is uh, overestimating uh, what uh, Japan has been doing. Uh, yes, Prime Minister Abe has been trying to uh, spend more on the military you know, for, in order to tackle emerging security landscape uh, in East Asia and beyond. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, th these uh, efforts don't uh, translate into Japan becoming more offensive or threatening uh, to neighboring countries. And uh, in light of uh, regional military balance, I think uh, that there are uh, views you know, that uh, uh, Japan uh, could do more. And for the future, how do you expect the relationship between Japan and China to continue? Xi Jinping is visiting in the spring 2020. 
That is the first visit for 12 years by a Chinese president. So expectations must be high. Of course, uh, uh, your President Xi Jinping's visit to uh, Japan after 12 years is uh, uh, a very important occasion uh, for uh, Japan to advance uh, our relations with China. But you know, when I say advance means resolving some of the pending issues, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, say, regarding the Shanxi issues, trade uh, practices, or especially uh, restrictions of uh, uh, food items uh, imports. So uh, by uh, promoting a dialogue between the two leaders, we are hoping you know, that uh, there will be uh, kind of re-energizing process of uh, resolving issues uh, between Japan and China. And, and, uh, and this also includes uh, issues like uh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the, the fact that uh, we are uh, cooperating together to address uh, common agenda or common issues uh, is uh, beneficial, uh, not only for Japan and China, but also for the rest of uh, the world. That historical mistrust and suspicion between Japan and China caused by the Second World War, but also by the years before, does that still play a role? Is that still of influence to the present in some sort of diffuse, indirect way? Um, while I was uh, based in uh, Beijing uh, during uh, uh, 2017 until 2019, I did not see the kind of rising tensions uh, based on historical you know, history issues. And uh, as uh, more and more uh, Chinese people coming to Japan as tourists uh, and uh, exchange students, uh, for example, last year uh, over 9 million Chinese people came to Japan. So based on these kind of visits, I think uh, Chinese, uh, especially younger generations, uh, understand uh, the Japanese society better. Thank you very much, Noyuki Shikata. You've been Deputy Ambassador Japan in Beijing. We've had many other interesting diplomatic posts and I'm sure in the future we will go on to some uh, even uh, more interesting countries than China or you will return to China and perhaps to the United States. Thank you very much for coming here. Much appreciated. Thank you.